Hey, what's up, chess people? It's uh, Zach Robertson um, doing a video today on one of my favorite openings of all time, the Black Mar Deemer Gambit. Um, I believe this is the second Gambit I ever learned, the first being the Queen's Gambit. Um, this is sort of the opposite of the Queen's Gambit, I guess you could say. So whereas the Queen's Gambit comes here and then here, uh, we're going to come here and then here. So... Queen's pawn opening, d4, d5, and then e4, um, putting this pawn up for gambit. Now, the main line um, is accepted. It goes like this. They take the pawn. We bring out a knight and attack the pawn. So we're attacking. They want to defend. There's a few different ways they can do this. The pawn or a bishop or a queen. The right way, the, the best way for them to do this, and the, the most natural way is just um, bringing out the knight. And that's what you're going to see most of uh, the time anyway. Now, we are just going to go ahead and give away another pawn right here on F3. And whenever he takes that, we are going to go ahead and take back the main line with the knight. Now, this does a few things for us. This gives us a great open area to work with. Gives us good development. We've got two knights out. Um, our pawn is up already, so it's not hindering any of our bishops. Whereas he's going to have to waste a move to bring that up and then the bishop out. Um, we've got uh, we've got a really open center. We're down a pawn, but we're uh, we're really good for attack here. So this is going to be one where we're going to be throwing all our pieces at the king. Um, maybe get a quick checkmate. Maybe just get a really good position in the beginning and uh, maybe get a piece ahead um, or two. Uh, some crazy stuff can happen in this line if black plays perfectly. You can definitely counteract this and, and have a great game, but um, but uh, it's going to be a good attacking game for a while. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, so they can try to decline this. So if they try to decline this um, and they decide not to take, sometimes they'll bring the knight out. I see this most often of all. Um, this is not what black should do at all. But if you see this, go ahead and just push your pawn forward. And attack this knight again. Now he only has three safe spaces to go. I'm sorry, four safe spaces to go. So here and here, here is terrible because he's blocking his bishop. Um, here is terrible because it just puts him back in development. I mean, you know, both of those are awful. So we've got two to choose from here that um, will make him feel good about himself about bringing the knight out. Here we can just keep attacking it and push it back. Um, but here, which they do often because they feel like they have this uh, this uh, pawn here protecting it, that's a blunder because after that, the knight is trapped. It can't go anywhere. Um, here our bishop takes, our pawns are covering the whole board, and you're going to start off the game up at night, um, which is just devastating for black. I think the best move according to stock is just, uh, just just that, just uh, e6. Um, so watch out for that if they try to decline that trap with the with um they try to decline that gambit with a knight. So let's go on to the rider gambit. The rider gambit is uh starts off the same way. And um we're gonna give this piece again, and then instead of taking with a knight, we're actually gonna take with the queen. So taking with the queen is uh is a very aggressive move. Um it's not the most sound statistically. Uh, but when you're playing people under, say, 1600 level, 1700 level, um, it's not going to matter too much. You're still going to have a great attacking game. Um, the reason this is another gambit is because we're giving away this pawn. If, uh, if Queen wants to take, he can take that pawn. We're down three pawns, but um, as you can see, we're very open here. All our pieces can come out right away and start attacking, start playing against the king. Um, and we've got this diagonal. If he tries to bring out his bishop, we're going to be taking the rook. Um, so a lot of this is going to be really good for us. Uh, it's It can be dangerous, but that's why you just got to go over and know your rider gambit before you play it. Um, great traps come out of this. A hollow star trap comes out of this um, that you can play, which I'll show you next. But the best move for... Um, uh, we're going to be playing this. I'm sorry. Either way, we're going to be bringing our bishop out to kick this this queen away. Uh, we want him off the d5 because normally we're going to castle queen side. Because once we castle queen side, our rook is on this d5, um, just eyeing down. And uh, we would prefer if he can't move his pawn up and castle king side, leave him uncastled. 
an attack, um, like we are right now. So he's going to have to move his queen back um, out of the way. Sometimes he'll move it side to side, back. Um, his best move is probably just to bring it back in the holster. And once he does that, uh, we, we can go ahead and just start developing. And you can see we have four pieces out into play, and he has one. This could be a great attacking game, uh, especially once we castle. Um, he'll probably do something like that to, to get his bishop out, and then he lost another another second, you know, another. And we're just destroying here. This is this is fantastic for us. Now the hollow star trap comes out of this, um, the rider gambit, and uh, when we take with the queen, he goes ahead and takes, and we bring the bishop up like we're always going to do and attack this queen. And he moves to the side, pinning our knight to the king, which uh, happens every now and then, especially if people don't know the Holosar trap. You need to know this, um, if nothing else, just so you don't fall into it. Um, so what might look natural is bringing this here, or go ahead and, and um, what we're going to do is castle. So we break that pin, we've got this rogue in the D file. Um, but now we've kind of opened up, if black wants to, bringing this pin in on our queen and the rook. So we can't take because the knight here. And the queen is both protecting the bishop. Um, however, we are not going to take anywhere. We're going to move our knight to uh, b5, um, which is protected by our bishop. And if he uh, if he doesn't pay attention, he takes our... Um, whoops. If he doesn't pay attention, he goes ahead and takes our queen. Where is that? Then uh, that's going to be checkmate right there, because um, we're attacking the king and we've got our rook on this line, so he can't come out. So if he does take our queen, that's going to be checkmate, and that's going to be a blunder. Um, he has a few ways to get out of this here. Um, let me see. His best way here is the knight coming up and uh, um, blocking the square where our knight's going to be going, and. Um, from here, we're going to uh, go ahead and take that pawn here, and he really only has three okay moves here, three moves that look okay here, because we're threatening to take the rook with checkmate. Um, so the, of these three moves, the queen to e4 is the best, but a lot of times you'll see rook c8 or bishop c8. So let's go over those first. Rook c8 is just immediately, um, we're going to take the knight, and uh, from here, I mean, we just look fantastic. We're up a piece. We have all this attack going for us. We're still threatening to uh, to take the rook. Um, and uh, at some point, um, it's, it's just going to be great. He can't take us here because that's checkmate. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here that Black has to take care of. Um, so he's, he's just going to be sunk. Now instead, if he decides to put the bishop there, um, we're going to go ahead and go check, and this is forcing here. He has to go there and uh, take the rook and mate. So that is forcing if he decides to use the bishop. Now the third and the best way for him to combat this is just queen here. I'm um, trying to trade off queens. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and take the knight. We're knight up now. Um, and uh, he's going to even the odds by taking our bishop back. And then after we move back, so we're even on material, but we are not we are not even. I mean, if you look at this, we've got a knight um, threatening checkmate here. We've got queen coming in, uh, rook, bishop's going to be coming into the battle, and black is just sunk here. He still can't castle yet. He still has to get this bishop out. He has two moves before he can get that bishop out to castle. Um... You know, we're not going to give him two moves time. I mean, it's just the, the size of it. We're going to do that. Um, that's threatening checkmate. Um, so there's a lot going on here that Black's got to take care of before hey, this position is pretty solid for Black. So that's the the Black Mardemer Gambit, the Rider Gambit, the Hollow Star Trap. Um, I love playing this in uh, Blitz matches. A lot of times people, when they're going quick, they don't think too hard about it, and they just uh, start playing, and they'll miss this all the time. Um, this is good for players in between that, you know, uh, 1,000 to 1,500 level. Um, you're not going to catch this Hall Star Trap all the time, but you are going to have some good games with either the Rider Gambit or the, uh, the mainline Black Mark Demer Gambit. And the, um, the, the Rider Gambit, Black Mark Demer Gambit, even played in uh, uh, multiple GM games. 
Um, so it is a sound opening, although a lot of people don't don't like it and like to stay away from it because it's a little reckless. Um, but, you know, I'm reckless, so what can I say? All right. Well, that's all I got for you today. Um, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the Black Barn Demer Gambit. Love it. Hate it. And uh, if you have any other lines for me to look at, let me know. Thanks.